In this lesson, you will learn how to calculate the mean absolute deviation of a data set. The mean absolute deviation is calculated using this formula. Here, xi represents each data point. x bar is the mean of the data set, which is the average of the data points. n is the total number of data points. To keep things clear, we will organize our work in a table. In the first column, list the data points. We have 10, 12, 15, 19, and 24. In the second column, find the mean and write it down. In the third column, calculate the difference between each data point and the mean. In the last column, take the absolute value of each difference. Now the first thing to find is the mean. The mean is the sum of all data points divided by the number of data points. So first, add up all the data points. Then, divide by the number of data points. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 data points. So n equals 5. Therefore we divide by 5. The sum of these numbers is 80. Feel free to use a calculator if needed. 80 divided by 5 is 16. So the mean is 16. Now write down 16 in the second column of the table. Next, subtract the mean from each data point. 10 minus 16 is negative 6. 12 minus 16 is negative 4. Do the same for the remaining rows. These differences are called deviations. Next, take the absolute value of the deviations you obtained. This gives us how far each data point is from the mean. The absolute value of negative 6 is positive 6. Remember, the absolute value of a negative number becomes positive and the absolute value of a positive number stays positive. These values are called absolute deviations. Now, to get this sum in the numerator, you just need to add up all the absolute deviations. Adding these values, we get 22. Since n equals 5, we divide by 5. 22 divided by 5 equals 4.4. Therefore, the mean absolute deviation is 4.4. But what does this mean? The mean absolute deviation of 4.4 means that, on average, the data points are about 4.4 units away from the mean. Here the mean is 16, so on average, the data points are about 4.4 units away from 16. The mean absolute deviation of a data set is the average distance between each data point and the mean. It is a measure of dispersion or variability in a data set. It tells us how spread out the data points are from the mean. A small mean absolute deviation means the data points are closely clustered around the mean, making the mean a good representation of the data. A large mean absolute deviation means the data points are more spread out from the mean, making the mean a less reliable representation of the data. To understand this concept clearly, let's compare the mean absolute deviation of two data sets using a number line. Suppose a teacher calculated the mean and mean absolute deviation for the test scores of two small study groups. The mean of both study groups is the same, 81, but their mean absolute deviations are different. The first group has a mean absolute deviation of 9.33, while the second group has 3.33. So for which group do you think the mean is a better indicator of the test score? It is for the second group, right? That's because the second group has a smaller mean absolute deviation, meaning the scores are closely clustered around the mean, so the mean is a better reflection of the second group's performance. This makes sense because if you look at the scores of the second group, they are close to each other, while the scores of the first group are much more spread out. Let's visualize this on a number line to see the difference clearly. This vertical line represents the mean, which is 81. These dots represent the first group test scores and these dots represent the second group test scores. You can see that the second group's test scores are clustered closely around the mean. On average, the data points are about 3.33 units away from 81. In contrast, the first group test scores are much more spread out. On average, the data points are about 9.33 units away from 81. This shows that the mean is a better indicator of the second group's test scores. To recap, here's the formula to calculate mean absolute deviation, along with what each variable means. Here's a quick summary of the steps you need to follow. 
And finally, a practice problem for you to try on your own. Pause the video, give it a shot, then check your solution.